What's going on, everybody? I hope you guys are all doing well. Um, I just went ahead and just let everyone in, uh, but we will probably start here in about maybe three to six minutes. So uh, just bear with with me. If you if you guys want to talk to each other, by all means, uh, feel free to talk to each other over the next three to six minutes, and then we'll get started here probably right at like six thirty five. Um, but just waiting for everyone to get on, you know. We always got all of our look at all these lovely people showing up early, and then we also get those the syrup right at six thirty, and then there's the stragglers that come in at six thirty five. So to to be fair to everyone, we will go ahead and uh, give everyone a little bit of time. So I appreciate I appreciate you guys uh, you know bearing with me. Um, give me a few minutes. I'll be right back. Again, we'll probably start right at six thirty five. You guys can talk to each other. I'll admit people as they come in. Um, and then we'll get started here shortly. Appreciate all of you for being here and uh, look forward to advancing the world of adult day together. Uh, appreciate all you guys. I'll be right back here in just a few minutes. What's going on, everybody? How's everyone doing today? We got some people in the chat. All right, look, we got some people talking to each other. It's exciting. Um, so, for those of you guys that are, you know, have have been a part of our uh, monthly webinars before, uh, thank you for coming back. Thank you for joining us again. Um, you know, we used to uh, do about a half an hour of educational content, and then about a half an hour of Q and A. Um, but I always got the most out of the Q&A because I felt like I was able to help more people and get right into issues that you might be having, questions that you might have, things that um, you know, you know, might be unique to your situation. And I found those to be the most helpful. So I, I truly love the Q&A section the most. Uh, so this is why I always encourage everyone to, you know, at least come prepared with questions, um, you know, questions that, that you might have about your own operation, uh, one that you're thinking about opening someday whether you're starting your adult day center, whether you currently have an adult day center and you got questions about it, I'd uh, love to be able to provide some, um, and just provide some, some insight, some help uh, you know, and, and use this time to do that. You know, we'll, we'll have people uh, like we have people now, um, we'll have more and more people kind of join us over probably the next uh, five or 10 minutes or so. Um, so, you know, bear with me as I, you know, 
I might get a little distracted here and there because I am doing, I am managing the uh, the chat room, the um, the waiting room here, and all that good stuff, and and want to be able to get to everyone's questions. So, two things you guys can do: you can ask questions in the chat box, uh, or you can raise your hand. Um, you know, so make sure you put your hand up. Um, or you can, there's a, there's a little button where you can actually put the little hand sign up uh, if you have a question. And then when, when you put that up, I'll call on you know, the first people that I see um, and I'll ask you to unmute your mic and then that way you can kind of share your question with us. So, um, you know, we'll do uh, about an hour today. So we'll wrap up right around 7.30. Um, but, you know, want to give, try to give everyone around five or 10 minutes per question sometimes historically in the past we've had questions that are fantastic and they lead into further um you know further questions and, and and it allows us to kind of dive deeper into certain areas which is super helpful um so if that happens if we go beyond five or ten minutes of the question it might be because i i think that that information is super valuable to others and i want to explore it more um because it might be something that's it's a common problem that people face so that being said guys um you know, it, I'm just looking at the comment box here. I don't see anything yet. I'm glad you guys are all introducing each other, uh, yourselves to each other. That's fantastic. Um, and for those that may not know, my name is Chris Chana, the founder and CEO of Active Age Daytime Senior Care. We're based out of Florida. Um, and we are, we have two locations and we also recently launched our franchise operation and our growing and scaling uh, through uh, franchising. So it can certainly help answer any questions in regards to that, but it's not all about that. It's all about you guys too. So that being said, guys, I saw there was a hand up, um, but this is, this, is, this is go time. So if you got questions, feel free to raise your hand now. Feel free to ask. I am all ears. Who's going first? So you want to hire a consultant to help you open your very own adult day center? Well, I may not be a consultant, however, I'm happy to coach you. If you wanna sit down one-on-one -on -one and ask specific questions about your situation and what to do next, make sure you go to chrischana.com forward slash coach and book your coaching call today. It's so funny because every time we do this, it like takes, it takes a minute for someone to like be the brave soul to uh, to go first, you know. Oh, hi, Chris. I, I'm definitely all right. Happy. All right. How are you doing? Good. I just had to get myself. Definitely not shy though. But um, I wanted to join some hosting this. My name is Aaliyah. I live here in Florida, and um, I wanted to join because I do have a couple questions. But I'll say, you know, I'll just ask one, and then I'll pass the mic. But my question yeah. is that I'm interested in opening a, a senior daycare down in the South Florida. Area. Um, because obviously we have a multitude of seniors here that need caring. And uh, I am a registered nurse. And so I have the healthcare background, been in the industry for 21 years. But my biggest concern is capital, financials. So I understand the, the regulations around, you know, and so forth, the marketing aspect. But it's, um, in order to submit the application, you have to show your financials are astute. So can you just talk for a minute about like how do you get started from that financial? So and the different options to be able to show that you have the financial backing to open a daycare from, you know, from self-funded to whatever. That's like the biggest key for me. Sure. So um, let me let me ask you a few questions around that just to kind of so I have better context for it. Um, so my first question would be to you is. Uh, um, are you asking about applying for a loan or are you asking more so about like, how do I know if I have enough capital just in general to uh, go start my own adult day center, regardless of the loan, but just like, you know, what is it going to cost me personally to get this started? Uh, exactly. The latter, like, what is it going to cost? Cause I've, I've looked at some of your webinars, about the square footage from 4,000 to 6,000 square feet and so forth. And the estimated costs around that, but you know, I want to scale slowly but scale up so looking to start small but just kind of the operating cost to get a daycare off the ground be it with just six people starting out and grow it from there or yeah something so, like so, so so for sure so you know I, I know one time we had a um we had a, a lady that was on one of our webinars too and she her, her concern was capital as well um, and I know like by the time that like we had gotten done with our conversation with her you know one of the important things 
for her to consider was, does it make sense to just open a smaller space? Like something that's like, uh, like, like 2000 square feet that, you know, like she could, you know, she could make it work. She might be more involved in day-to-day -day operations. She might play the role of, you know, sales and marketing, you know, the person that's the administrator, as well as like, you know, the activities person and kind of like, you know, doing a little bit of everything and maybe have a few support staff and making it work in a 2000 square foot space with like, you know, 10, 15, 20 people. Right. Yeah, um, and, and, and I think like, you know, for someone that like, is, doesn't want to take the like financial risk of opening a 6,000 square foot space. Um, I, I think that's a smart idea because it, it, it's going to have a much lower um, kind of initial startup costs and a much lower carrying costs, especially when you think about things like rent and just staffing and just, you know, you, even your marketing budget. So, um, so that being said, you know, if you're going that small, I still feel like in today's world between, um, you know, getting started, you know, getting a lease, you know, and, and, and actually like, um, you know, like, like finding the location, getting the lease, like doing whatever construction you're going to have to do to the space. Um, it might be modifying a bathroom to make it handicap accessible. It might be adding something. There's going to be like, even if you find a perfect space, there's probably probably going to be some construction costs. So let's just say on the low end, like you, you know, you're you're probably looking at somewhere between maybe ten to twenty five grand in construction costs. You know, you're you're gonna you're gonna look at like just to give you an idea. So say you're leasing a space. Are you familiar with how lease spaces work? As far as like the cost, like you know, the, just to give, give you an idea of like what to expect. So I'm I'm familiar in a sense, you know, with the cam and, and the footage, okay. and they take you know, like a longer duration lease and so forth. You know, all those, yeah. Okay, so so just I just did a quick math, and this is okay. you know going to be completely dependent on like the area. But say you lease a two thousand square foot space, um, you know, and and and, and there was like fifteen bucks a square foot plus a five dollar cam, so you're in it for like say twenty bucks a square foot. Um, you're looking at around thirty three hundred bucks a a month. They're going to ask for, you know, three months up front. So you're looking at probably a ten, you know, $10,000 just to get like, you know, a hold of a space. And then, right. you know, hopefully you can work out some sort of either tenant improvement allowances, or maybe you can get rent abatement for a couple of months. But you know, a lot of times if there's not like a, like a formal backing of a large company or something like that, they, they may not do some of those concessions or they may only do like one month free. So you're going to have this like $10,000 up front, these carrying costs. You're going to have like potentially, you know, 10 to $20,000 in maybe construction costs to modify the space. And these are like kind of like bare minimum. So yeah. you're, you're already like in a sense before you've really done any marketing, before you've, you know, you know, spoken to an accountant and hired, you know, maybe uh, the person um, like we use a, a guy that does all the proof of financial ability stuff, you know, that so like by the time you do all the licensing paperwork, you're probably another like, you know, $3,000. So all in. You're probably at least fifty grand to like get that space started, but I would always. But I think I even did a video on this of like, you know, plan on somewhere between like plan on plan on at least a hundred thousand dollars, like to give yourself enough cushion to get the space leased, to get the construction done, to get everything submitted to licensing, to cover your carrying costs, and to have some working capital to get yourself to profitability. Because the time that you start and actually lease the space, to the time that you open, you're, you're going to be burning through some of that cash. And now, when I say a hundred grand, like um, I know it sounds like a lot, but say you're able to like take some of your, you know, you know, income that you're making now, and you're able to pay for some of these things while you're right. still working, right? You could be doing this where you're taking, you know, twenty five hundred bucks a month or you know, five thousand bucks a month out of your own, you know, pay um uh you know or a combination of your pay and maybe some savings to kind of make it all work so it's not like you're laying out 100 grand on day one but just i can't imagine starting a small adult day center for anything less than 50 grand and i don't even think that's a i wouldn't even recommend that because then it's not giving you enough like working capital to get you from the you know that period of time where you're like the last thing you want to do is have made it to opening day and then not have enough cash to get yourself to profitability. And I think way too many people underestimate that and then they get open, but now they have no money to spend on marketing. They have no money to spend on events. They have no money to spend on anything to drive awareness to their business, you know? And then that's where I feel like they get in a lot of trouble. Okay, no, that's exactly what I was looking for. And I had 50,000 on the book. So that gave me 
Okay. So yeah. I would say like, like, like I just, I did a video on this somewhere on the YouTube channel where it's like, you know, you, you know, you know like, can you start at like a, an adult day center for less than a hundred grand? And, and in there, I went and broke down a bunch of stuff, like on a whiteboard uh, to kind of make you think about it a little bit. But I, I think a hundred grand is like the safe place to bet. I think 50 grand is like, like, okay, I can get, I can get started. I can stomach 50 grand, but I need to, I, I need to know over the next six months that I can find another 50 grand, you know? Right. Okay. And, and, no. and, 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 it, and it may be very possible that you could, you know, you could, you could uh, get an SBA loan, like a, like a small, they have these like X, uh, SBA, like express loans, you know? So if you put the formal business plan in place, you met the right banker, you know, you could put up 50 grand, maybe borrow 50 grand. And, and, and that might be a very possible thing for you to be able to do, you know? Right. So yeah. great, great question. You know, I think, uh, I think, you know, that was fantastic. So thank you for sharing and, and thank you for, you know, asking. And, you know, uh, after we get some of the, through some of these other questions, feel free to, uh, to jump back on with the other questions that you have too. Great work. So, to so I'm, I'm going to, I got uh, next, at least on my little screen here. Uh, so I apologize if this seems out of order, but I got uh, Suzette, um, which yes. Suzette, if you want to, uh, Unmute yeah. your mic, Suzette. Is that, can you hear me? Uh, hi. Uh, do we have two Suzettes? <laughs> I don't know. I see I see one Suzette, and then I saw a swan pop up, but I don't know who's who, but Suzette, you have the floor uh, now. If you go ahead. Okay, uh, I'm Suzette. Hi, everybody. Um, so I had a question about the claims um to you know the insurance um we're in south florida and we just um we recently um opened um it's been a long <laughs> um a long journey, yeah right? yes yeah. a long journey and you hit the not the right number we've spent um over 100k already and we're kind and uh <laughs> um you know in trouble like you said so but my question is um about the claims to the insurance and in, in our area, there's no that many um, private, you know, pay. Private, so yeah. it's, yeah, it's more like those with the long-term care and the Medicaid. Um, so, so we are, yes, go ahead. No, so I was gonna ask, so are you, are you asking more so like, um, like what is the process for becoming uh, enrolled as a Medicaid provider or more so like, we, uh, what are, go ahead. Well, 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 we already enrolled. We have all the licenses, and we are we have already some contracts with um, providers. But we are having some issues when we want to admit uh, a participant. When there's a lot of forms, we had a consultant. Um, we don't have her anymore for some reason. She disappeared on us, <laughs> and we're trying yeah. to figure all the things you know by ourselves. So. The issue here is that there's a lot of forms that we were provided that we don't even know those are the real forms that we need because when we give those forms to them, it's like, this is too much. But the other thing is, like, we don't know exactly what forms specifically are required by ACA or, you know, by Medicaid that we yeah, need so to have and file. Yes. So, so, so here, here, I'm going to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna... to, I don't want to jump the gun, but I want to make sure I can okay. provide you with some value here. Um, uh, so, so, uh, so we process all of our claims for the most part, unless the, unless the MCO has a specific, like M every MCO is a little bit different, but I know What's we an have. MCO? What's an MCO? So, I'm sorry. So, okay. Yeah, no, you're good. So a managed care organization, which would be the contracts that you have with the insurance companies. So um, you mentioned that you were, uh, that you got your Medicaid license. And mm -hmm. then you have some con and then you have some contracts in place, right? Yes. And you have contracts in place with, like, say, a Humana, a uh, United Health. United, or... yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so what's going to happen is is um, that Humana, the United Healthcare, each of those like companies are going to work with a different like processing system to to, to the, the you would submit your claims to. Um, right. So, so a couple of the ones that we're familiar with that we use, they use a company called Availity, A-V-A-I-L-I-T-Y. And mm -hmm. essentially what happens is like, you know, we enroll into this, 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 like this platform, you know, they send us an authorization on that authorization. It has like specific, you know, like, you know, pay codes and, 
you know, the, right. the, num the number of days that they're going to come like, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, mm -hmm. Thursday, Friday. Um, and then, and then basically every single week we go into availability and then we enter that information manually. Um, and then, and then, you know, just submit it. But like the nice part about it is it used to have, it used to be like where you, you got paid per unit and that would be more complicated because you got to, you had to figure out, okay, how long were they here for? And, and then you had to like translate that into a certain number of units unit, and you had to submit it. When you but, say but, unit, when you say unit, is that equivalent to hours? Yeah. You, I'm saying most, like, I, I would say all the contracts that we have today, um, mm -hmm. we, 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 um, a unit is considered just a day. They're like oh, they made a okay. change a few years ago where a unit used to be 15 minutes. Now, oh. now, instead of trying to track all these like units in 15 minutes, now they just pay a flat fee for the day. And, mm -hmm. and, and one day is, is equal to one unit. Oh, I see. Now, my, my main question was about the process of admitting the, pay, the participant because we had a few perspective and they're interested, but then mm -hmm. I come across uh, the case managers contact us and, and they, they will be saying, wait, you, you cannot do that. You cannot admit the patient. We need to um, process or request hours. So we were like, okay, yeah. we didn't know. So can yeah, you so, explain so, so, to me? Yeah. yeah. So you, you, you don't want to, you don't want to admit anyone to your center until you get an authorization form from the MCO. So say from someone the, comes in to tour, right. And, 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 and they have this insurance and you have a contract with that company, right. Mm -hmm. um, the thing, what you want to do is you want them to reach out to their case manager you know, and, and mm -hmm. have, and, ha and have that, like, so say you're giving that tour, you're talking to the family and you mm -hmm. tell the family, you know, all right, Mrs. Smith, you know, the best thing for you guys to do is for you to go reach out to your case manager. And they okay. might be like, well, what, what, what's a case manager? Like they may not even know they have one. So they would call mm -hmm. their, they would call like their Medicaid provider up. There should be a number on the back of their card. And then, you know, they could you know reach out to them to, to request services for adult day. And they could request right. that, like, hey, we want to use Suzette's place, you know. And so, um, but the but what's going to have to happen is they're going to have to make that request. The case manager then is going to have to go and um, put together a, a, a an authorization. So they're going to okay. have to send you um, a, a authorization for services, and you can't start that like individual until they've been authorized for whatever the case manager allows them to be authorized for. And then you've got to follow what the authorization is for you know they can okay. miss a day but you can't but it, but say say they but no more than right no more than three they only are um, authorized for three yeah so say they authorize for three like you just want to make sure and then you want to also make sure and you want to double check this has happened to us before sometimes the authorization will be for three days per week and it doesn't mm -hmm. matter what day sometimes okay. the authorization will be for monday wednesday and friday and meaning like they got to come on those days. And so you want to make sure that when you're talking to your, the case manager or whoever's giving you authorization, that you just get some clarification on that. Uh, Cause okay. the last thing you want to do is just assume that they can come on any day, you know, um, mm. you know, you know, so, so that, that's why it's important to make sure that like, okay, is it three days per week and it can be any day of the week or is it like okay. signed Monday, Wednesday and Friday. And, and I need to submit my claims uh, for those days, you know? Right, I see. Now, um, I do have a few more questions, but I don't know if you want to give some, you know, yeah, let, opportunity let me, let, to some other, <laughs> and then yeah, yeah, I yeah, can no. come back. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, no, no worries. Yeah, for, for sure. You know what? Um, feel free to add your questions to the uh, chat box too. Okay. Uh, and then I'll come. And I'll come back to you after. I got. I got Kimmy, okay. and then Pastor Turner, I think next, and then we'll just keep going on the list. So, okay. Suzette, thank, thank you for joining me. Uh, Kimmy, what's going on? How are you? No, thank you. Thank you. Fine. How are you? Doing good. Doing good. Um, I just I have a really quick question. So how many people, including clients, can be um, in a 2,500 square foot building? Because I know you have to, it's one participant per a certain square footage. So if you have a 2,500 square feet, how many people, including the consumers and staff can be in that building so it's going to depend on three things it's going to depend on 
Uh, one, there's the, there's a licensing requirement that the, the, the state of Florida uh, has. I think it's uh, off the top of my head. I think it's one to forty. I forget off the top of my head. Um, I'll, I'll go I'm back sorry, and double check in, that. I'm in Columbus, Ohio. Okay, gotcha. So Columbus, Ohio. Thank you for bringing that up. Um, so you'll want to check with the uh, you'll want to check with your state uh, on their licensing requirements to, and to find out is there any sort of minimum square foot per participant. So each state's probably going to be a little bit different, you know. But that would be like that would be one, you know, one thing that could limit the number of people in your capacity when you're applying for your license. The second thing is going to be the fire department. The fire department might have some sort of like they may have their own rules, and it has nothing to do with adult day. It has to do with like the building and the space. Like, is there a fire sprinkler system? How many exits are there? Like, 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 um, you know, like. The, the, like the, that could affect your capacity as well. The, the other thing is going to be zoning. You know, when you go through zoning, like, is there a zoning for adult daycare? If so, uh, under that zoning, is there a certain type of requirement for a number of bathrooms that you may need to have? Um, and, and the zoning could have, like, dictate how many people can be in that space depending on the number of bathrooms. You could have a space that has the ability to hold 30 people, but you can only have 15 because you only have one bathroom. So, so these are all those things where like there's multiple like people or multiple parties that are going to have a say in your capacity. Um, and it's going to depend on different things. Like with fire, it's going to depend on exits and fire sprinkler suppression systems and, and whatever laws they have around that. Uh, then there's the state and then there's like the health department slash zoning department. Um, that would you know dictate okay it's, it's zoned as this therefore it can only have this many people um and and in, in order to have you know this many people you have a certain bathroom requirement you know okay yeah because i know like in the state of ohio we don't need any licensing which is good but i also i'm gonna hire a consultant she actually used to own her own adult day but she's seen that it was more efficient in her life right now to just do the consulting end of things so, you know, not only does she have her own, she's experiencing that. So she's going to help with all that. But just talking to like all the zoning and the contractors, no one seems like it's just it's, it's just really weird. So I'll. I'll, yeah, so, I'll yeah, so, so, so so when you go to zoning, it's what it's going to be. It's going to be more of like is the space in most cases, um, if, if it, like if there's not an adult daycare zoning requirement, then it's going to mm -hmm. fall under an assembly building. And if it falls under like an assembly building, um, you know, like can, can an assembly building, which typically is like a, you know, a, a church or a, a place of gathering, like that would be like the zoning, like, like, you know, requirement it would fall under if there's not a specific adult daycare uh, zoning, you know, so like, and then if it's under that zoning, typically you'll find in the law somewhere, there'll be a certain number of people you can have in that type of space per the number of bathrooms you have. Okay. Yeah, I know yeah. when we were doing it and building it out, they just said we just need one ADA compliant restroom because I believe I initially told him I want 30 clients. So, and then the guy who was doing it, he actually went and looked up some codes and he said, yeah, you only need one ADA restroom. So that was good. Gotcha. Yeah. So just to give you an idea, in the state of Florida, uh, for an assembly building, you need um, one bathroom for every 15 people. Oh, uh, see, I don't, yeah, it's not like that here in Ohio, in Columbus. Yeah. Yeah, so you, you want to just confirm that, you know, because that's, a, and, and, and then, and then the other thing would be is, can you, with 30 people in there, are there enough exits? So you would want to confirm with the fire department, hey, we mm -hmm. want to put 30 people in this 2,500 square foot space. Is that acceptable? Right. Okay. That's good. Thank you. Because you'll have a, a you'll have a, a fire, basically it'll be like a life safety plan and the life safety plan will include a certain number of exits in the building. And the, depending on the number of exits and how far away, you know, um, the exits you know are from you know to to be able, to be able like you know to to leave the building, they'll, they'll, mm -hmm. they could have a limitation on how many people could be in that building too, be based on that. So it's right. it's a combination of all of those things, and then you would just take all three of them, and whatever one's the lowest is the one you'll have to go with. Right. Okay. Well, thank you. All right. Hey, no problem. Great question. All right, I got Pastor Turner is next.
So you want to pursue the American dream, you want to start your own adult day center, but you don't know where to start. Go to adcpro.com and click on the blog section and choose from all sorts of categories including financial, startup stage, marketing, operations, and much, much more. Become the adult day pro you were born to be, adcpro.com. Thank you, Chris. And uh, I really appreciate you taking the time to do this. Um, I'm in Baltimore, Maryland, and we... And that's, that's the hub of uh, NADSA. That's like, that's where like all the, uh, that's, you know, well, I guess, you know, we, we, we have a conference up there like every third year, I think. Okay. Well, the next time you're here, the drink's on me. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Awesome, man. Well, go ahead and yeah, I'm, I'm curious to learn. Where, where are you at in the process? We are, we have a campus. We have a campus um, with several buildings, one of which we have worship in, but we have three other buildings and we have one in particular that I um, am going to convert to a adult medical daycare facility. It's 6,200 okay. square feet. We already own the building. Um, and we've just received some funds to uh, renovate the building, to put it up to code, to whatever the requirements are. Um, and it's well over $100,000. So I, depending on how much work a contractor says we need done, we'll determine how much we need to spend. But the roof, the bricks, all that's in good shape. Maybe plumbing and electrical stuff and whatever else the bathroom renovation and making sure we have showers and stuff for that population um i don't know though how many people we could accommodate for that i'm hoping at least 50 people in a building of 6200 square feet size but in addition to just how having seniors we want to be able to provide services like uh therapy um, um, and having having physical therapists and medical providers come in and service people as well. Um, so I guess and and to feed them and have some enrichment activities also. So my question is, um, hey, and I want to talk to you about franchising too because I don't want to run it. I really don't. I just want to be able to hire somebody to do it. We have the space. We have the building. We even have some money to renovate it. Um, but this is not my place of expertise. So I, I know you mentioned about a licensing board. So I want to make sure before we even put a, a nail in the wall that we are doing things according to specs. But it seems like from what your last, well, from your previous answer, it's not just what the licensing board says, it's what the fire department says too. Um, and just didn't know whether you knew what that what what those specifications were for Maryland um and if not where could i go and get it and when could we kind of talk offline about you know once we go because we have a building and we have some money renovated and we have i think enough money to even start off with the staff um like how 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 should we go about doing this so we can start attracting and signing people up and things of that sort yeah for sure um i was just because you're in maryland right you said uh yes sir um yeah, so I so I so Mar I know I know Maryland has is a licensed state, um, and I believe they also have a, a fairly decent um, adult uh, like a, a state association as well. Um, but they, they have, yeah, they, they do. It's the uh, Maryland Association of Adult Day Services, uh, called MADS, uh, M A A D S dot org. Um, that would be probably the best place to start. Uh, when it comes to like those state specific questions that you're asking, you know, you said Maryland um, Association of Adult what? Yeah, so it's it's the Maryland Association of Adult Day Services. Okay. Um, I'm I'm uh yeah I just I just pulled up the. Is that the same thing as a as medical adult medical services? Yeah, so it's like so this is the association that okay. is. Um, like, like they would have information about uh, opening up a, an adult day medical center. You know, I think they oh, right. call it in in, in that in, in Maryland they call it. I just saw it on their. They call it a uh, adult medical daycare license. Yeah. So uh -huh. yeah, yeah. So so it's a so in Maryland it's an AMDC license. Let me write that down. A. AMDC license. Okay. Yep. I, uh, 
I mean, I, I'm just, I just threw like two links in the uh, chat or whatever. Oh, great. Um, it's not, it's not like I haven't spent a ton of time. Obviously, I'm like, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm doing a little bit of both here. Yeah. Um, managing the, the, you know, the, I'm saying the, the Zoom and, and trying to do a little bit. Oh, of yeah, but, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. no, no, you're, but, uh, but just, but yeah, so there's, I just sent you two links inside the chat. Um, and, uh, and so, but I would say, honestly, the, going straight to the association for the state of Maryland is going to be your best, like, first step as far as like understanding like hey guys you know i'm trying to do this you know like like they're going to introduce you to people in maryland that are already like doing uh, adult day and, and already have like their their license um it's so i think you know for you that would just be a great first place to start um and and and, and kind of really get your feet wet get introduced to those right people and they're going to be a wealth of knowledge that's specific to the state of maryland um and and, and you know they're going to they're going to be able to like guide you through that process a lot easier a lot faster as far as like, you know, zoning regulations and even, you know, potential like, uh, you know, the on the on the life safety plan side of things, you know, so I would certainly start there. Um, and then that one link, the second link I sent in that chat box is uh, was like an F and uh, uh, a frequently asked questions, uh, like cheat sheet for adult medical, uh, you know, daycare. So so that those those would be two great, great places for you to start for sure. Thank you so much. And no problem. Hopefully that helps. I, and I, I'm trying to think if I remember uh, off the top of my head. I, I can't right now. I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can look her up. But there's a lady that I believe is the president or is on the board of that association. Um, and if I can name drop, if I can, if I can get her name, I'll, 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 I'll share it with you so you can name drop it. You know. I would love that. And do you have all that information? I know I signed up for the webinar. Do you have everything on, on me, my cell, and email, and all of that? I, I do. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. So you could. So if you got any of the text or emails, um, you know, for, for today, yeah, yeah, then you could always like text email back to that, like at some point in time too. And, and, um, so yeah, but yeah, you, you know, like I can try to introduce you to that person. So, all right. I'm going to go on. Do you have anything else, uh, Pastor Turner? Is that a, I think that'd be a good first start for you. I'll, I'll probably move on to the next person. Then we can come back if, if we got time. No, that was it. Thank you. All right. No, no problem. Thank you. And I got Mrs. Zeno. I see, uh, I don't know if I can, I just, I just sent you a request to unmute and then if you're still Hi, on. I'm sorry. I didn't know I'm on my phone, so I didn't no, know. You're good. Yeah, you're Thank good. you, Chris. Um, I've been following you and I am much appreciated. So I thank you. So thank to you keep know. it quick and short, cause I know a lot of people have questions. My only question is, um, I wanted to do, I'm in California and I know there's more you know, license stuff out this way, but <laughs> yeah. I wanted to open a mental day facility for young adults. And I, I'm just like, where do I start? You know, it's kind of like, I've been trying to follow your feed and, but a lot of them are due to like a lot of the day, just the um, adult day facilities. I don't know if yeah. it's the same and I don't know if it's the same recommendations. Yeah. That, I mean, I, I definitely am senior focused uh for sure um mm -hmm. there, there, there there's an there's like a totally like different world like, like like the the way in which you would build for services and the way that world works for adult day for young adults is like a completely mm -hmm. different world um okay. it's much, you know it's much more of a um like it's less that that one's less of a private pay model um mm -hmm. and, and and typically it's going to be much more of like um a, a, a like like you know, state specific, depending on the programs available to those um, that are young adults and, and that would need those services. Um, right. And I'm trying to think, you know, I like, like, so even though, even though, um, like, there's all these associations throughout the, 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 like, some states have stronger associations than other states. I know Maryland has a strong association and California, I believe, is the largest state association um, outside of like, like out of all, out of all 50 States. So, so like right. outside of like the national organization, which is NADSA, I believe, um, it, it's the, it's called CADSA, like the California Adult Day Services Association. Um, CADSA? okay. Yeah. CADSA. I would reach out to them and see if they can like point you in the right direction for young adult. Cause I, like, if you were in Florida, um, I could probably introduce you to someone like, you know, that could help you, but 
the one thing about like what we're doing on the senior care side versus mm -hmm. like what you would be doing on the young adult side is that mm -hmm. young adult is so state specific like yeah we're we're, we're like on the uh, on the um senior side it's, it's a little more it's 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 fairly similar. The biggest difference is more so like the reimbursement rate. But when it comes to young adult, it's like, it's just, it's so state specific because of the programs that are available in each state are so different for, for, for right. your younger, you know, younger uh, adults, you know? Right. Right. Okay. Okay. Well, I will keep on searching and trying to look. I'm just trying to figure we'll, we'll, out. We'll, how well, Cadza is like, like they're, they're a really, really well run. Uh, or uh, uh -huh. an association like most of the associations and the, like that are adult days associations they're not they're not run very well or they don't have the administrative staff to like support their members like really really well so it's like right. sometimes a, a collective group of just a bunch of adult day owners trying to like make it work in, in in california though that is a very very like strong association so you should be able to reach okay. out to them and they could like you know they would be more than happy to point you in the right direction Okay, so it's C A D C A or S A? Uh, it's uh, I believe it's C A D S A, Kadza. Kadza. Okay, Kadza. Yeah. And it's just dot org or something. A Kadza. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm looking it up for yeah adult. A. I'll I'll tell you it's here. It, yeah, it's the California Association for Adult Day Services. Yeah, so it's it's actually it's C A, it's C A A D S dot org. I'll, I'll put it in the chat as well. Okay, thank you so much, Chris. I appreciate it. Uh, I just put it in the chat so you can have the link to it. Oh, great. Thank you. Let's see. All right. Yes. Okay. Thank awesome. You. All right. Yeah, no, no, no worries. No, pro no problem. Thank you. All right. <laughs> next, we have uh, Jennifer. How you doing, Jennifer? Here, I'm, I'm going to try to unmute you. I don't know if you can. Okay. You can hear All me right. now? Yeah, I'm unmuted. All yep. right. Thank you. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> Doing good. How are you? Good. Hi, everyone else. My name is Jennifer. I'm based out in Florida. I have a, a adult. Well, how I started originally was I started off as an ALF, and I okay. happened to, you know, have the sense to check the adult daycare box. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I applied, which is, came out to be a good thing for me. So now I completely like flipped it and I operate now as an adult daycare with uh, transportation. So that's what okay. I, I'm doing currently right now. And my awesome. main questions were, I have well, three questions. One is um, what the other guy mentioned about, because uh, I wanted to add physical therapy mm -hmm. uh, and uh, rehab and things of that nature. I wasn't sure one, how to even really do that as well as I know I can't bill out from Medicare because most of the time yeah. the Medicare is what covers that. So I didn't know like what rules and regulations where if a physical therapist did come here to my facility, am I able to charge them from com for coming here to try to make a little bit of a residual? You're not allowed to. Okay. Or you well, know what I mean? How would yes. I even attempt? Uh -huh. Yeah. So um, uh, there, there's a gentleman, uh, I don't know if you, do you know, Bruce, McCollum, I don't know if you're in any of his his stuff. He he has a, an adult day group on Facebook, mm -hmm. um, and 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 he owns a company called Direct Care Training. Uh, I'll, okay. I'll put that in the in the box here as well. He he, um, he would be able to answer a question for you when it comes to uh, what is known as a CORF, like a C O R F. It's a it's a way to um, have an adult day center where you can then bill for those services, um, but you have to provide. Like, you know, obviously there's, there's certain, you know, types of rehabilitation and documentation and authorizations that you would need. Um, but it's mm -hmm. a way to kind of create a hybrid model, you know, where you have adult daycare uh, and, you're, and, you're, and you're kind of like mixing that with, um, yes, you, know, exactly. the, uh, you know, with cool. the, uh, you know, physical and occupational therapy services. Yeah, the, the hard part is in most cases, unless you found like an individual that just bills Medicare directly, you know, most of the, oh, most of the, um, PTs and OTs, they're going to work for like a Medicare home health agency and they're just getting paid hourly, you know? So like for them, uh -huh. like they're just, they're just, they're just getting paid, you know, they, like they, they wouldn't have any financial incentive to reimburse so, you. Exactly. Yeah, and, and, and the thing is most Medicare home health agencies, they, they run on such thin margins that they don't have a lot of like, like money to like be able to, you know, compensate you for those, like for the, you're coming into the building there, you know, so really, uh -huh. if you were going to try to take advantage of that, it would have to be through some form of like, 
um, you know, this, this thing called a corf, essentially, you know, but, okay. but, okay. but Bruce that is like one. the, Bruce uh -huh. is like the master at that. So direct, direct care yeah. training.com. I put it in the uh, chat box. You can got it. Yeah, I wrote it down as well. There. So I'll yeah. do a search and search my as well. And the other thing I wanted to know was my other the two was basically I had questions about the CLIA and uh, marketing. Because currently right now I only have one participant that comes and I'm trying to like I applied for um, ADP, APD, whatever. I applied with them, trying to see if I can get other uh, clients through DCF. And um, I have been to churches. I reached out to case managers. Some of them even told me, like, since COVID, they haven't really gotten new cases yet for adult daycares. So I, I was just wondering, let's go to the marketing part, like any good marketing strategy, because I'm trying to at least fill up my place to the capacity of 30. Yeah. So, and, I, I, yeah, so, so, you know, I, like, at the end of the day, like, the number one problem adult day faces is awareness. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, the, you know, the, to, to create awareness in the community, it's just, it's just, it's a, it's a, it's like a, it's a long game. I, I have, I've Sorry. been in senior care now for like 12 years. Um, we've had our adult day center since 2018. Um, mm -hmm. And, and, and all I can say is like, it's like everything we do, all the work we're doing today is, is something that's going to have an outcome nine months from now, you know? So it's like, so, so like there is no quick fixes, uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, so like I, I, I noticed, you know, I've noticed everything I've done is taking me, whether it's from conventional, because I did it all myself, it, it's yeah. taking months, a year, transportation. It's like, it, it doesn't, it's not for the weak hearted. Let me put it that way. No, but, it's not, it's, it's, it's not. Uh, and, and, and that, and that, that's the hard part. So like, for, so, you know, like the, the, what I'm trying to say is there is the only quick fix to some degree is like mm -hmm. spending money on Google ads. And, and, but, but then you don't want to do that wrong. You know, like we spend, yeah. we spend 1500 bucks a month on Google, you know, and, and, Ooh, wow. and, you wow. know, but like, but, but that, like we, we do that every it's month that, that produces, but that produces a certain number of leads that we know we're going to get because oh. like, if people are on Google, they're, they have a, a need that's probably more immediate where if you're working uh -huh. with a case manager, you got to develop that relationship and become a friend of them, you know, like to the point where, like yeah. you're texting their personal cell phone, you guys are hanging out, you guys are doing things, you got to find out like, you know, which of these case managers can I actually build a genuine friendship with? And mm -hmm. those are the case managers that are going to send you referrals. But there's no way you can build that kind of rapport in three months or two months, you know, it's going to exactly. take, it's like, you got to go and figure out like who, who, who are my people? And there's gonna yes, be like 10 right. case managers that become my people. And it's because we have stuff in common we you know our kids are the mm -hmm. same age we got a you know we, we had a similar story like you know similar up so, some some sort of connection that's going to bring you together you. you know and then got you're you. building that long term like that that's the long term stuff where, mm -hmm. where the short term stuff is like the google ads the social media like well not even social media because the problem with social media is social media is awareness um, yeah so really so google ads is like the only thing that exists today where um oh, you know what let's just say google ads a place mm -hmm. for mom uh, and caring.com. Those are three other things. And I'm know. in that right now. So I, you know, I feel good that you at least said that because I've done them and it's still, so I, I just wanted to make sure it wasn't me. Trust me. I've walked around, like, 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 the meetings. Like, so, so for caring. <laughs> for caring.com, like we pay 500 bucks a month for that. Um, mm. For, you know, but they give us 10 leads a month and they're real leads, you know? Um, okay. So like uh, for a place for mom, like, you know, they're going to be real leads, but you're going to pay for them. You know, like, mm -hmm. you know, if that person stays so, with you and they visit, yeah. Could you go back? I'm sorry to cut you off. Could you go back to the Karen.com because I have them and I don't get that many leads a month from them. Well, well, so, but like, but we're, which we're, one do you, so which like, contract do you have? Mm -hmm. So we're so we're on a we're on a forced like like basically we spend we have to spend 58 bucks per lead and and every market will be different because it might depend on how many leads they get in that market and then they have a certain price point for for those leads but you have to spend at least a minimum of 500 bucks a month with them, you know, um, you know, and so like. So, but then the, the, but then they'll put you into their queue mm -hmm. and then you'll and then we get at least 10 leads per month uh but that's but we're paying like 500 bucks a month for that so it's a contract we had to sign it's mm -hmm. it, it's month to month i think it's like a three month minimum um you know but that could be a route that you take you know and so yeah. um but but then like a place for mom you know that's another mm -hmm. one you know other placement agencies in town um you know building a relationship with them you know because the placement agency is a place for mom Karen.com, like all those are going to have me, like, like leads with more immediate needs. Whereas like, 
like the general social worker discharge planner case manager that you're building relationship with in the community you don't know when that needs gonna arise you're just trying to build the relationship so that someday when it does arise you know like you're ready to go so interested in owning your very own active age join the fastest growing franchise concept in senior care as an active age franchise partner you can be in business for yourself but not by yourself have access to a world-class margaritaville style environment and together we can change the world for seniors and their family caregivers own an active age today Okay. And then the last question, I'm sorry, because I know there's a bunch of people on here. The last one was about the CLIA. Somebody was mentioning that to me in order to charge, like, charge for like laboratory or. Uh, that one, I have no idea. I'm not, I'm not familiar on that one. You're not familiar with that? Okay. Yeah. I'm okay. going to look it up though. So CLIA, you said, right? Yeah, I think it's CLIA if I'm not saying it right. And I think that way you could charge for like clinical, you could like a uh, COVID test and all these other stuff that you could charge for Yeah. health, health uh, screening. Yep, I'll, I'll, I'll look into that and see if I can make a video on it. So I appreciate you bringing that up. Uh, I'll see if I can okay. find out. All right. All right. Hey, thank Jennifer, you so Jennifer, much. Thank, hey, no, thank you for your time. All right. Talk to you soon. All right, I got, I got Felicia. Let's see here next, Felicia. Hello. Hello, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Hello, everybody. Doing, doing good. Good. Day. Where, where are you from, Felicia? Well, Chris, I am from Mississippi, but I've moved to Alabama. And right. I'm just brand new at this. And I was just interested in starting my own adult daycare center because I have a son. He's 37 and he has autism. I would love to start uh, an adult daycare center. And since I've been here in Alabama, I've contacted, um, I think it's called uh, DHR. That's the Department of, Department of Human Resources. And I've also contacted the Alabama Medicaid agency and they keep referring me back and forth. So I was just wondering, do you have any suggestions on who I make? Because I know this, they don't, you don't have to have a particular license. Cause I was asking about the credentials, but you don't have to have like any kind of license or anything like that. You just need to go through from what I read is go through the Medicaid part. Yeah, so let me, um, there, there's, I'm trying to think of, there's, there's a late, because, because again, this is another like uh, scenario where um, it sounds like, you know, you're, you're looking to open up an adult day center that's like catering more to young adults. Um, mm -hmm. And so th there's a lady, I'm, I, got, I got two notes here. There's a lady I met at uh, the last NADSA conference, which is the National Association for Adult Day Services. Mm -hmm. She's in a different area, but she is focused on like the, the, the more like younger adult uh, market. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I'll see if I can, if I can, I mean, I, I, uh, I know I can find her information. I, I just gotta spend a little time to do that. Um, okay. and I can try to share that with you, but she is, uh, she would be a good contact for that. Cause she's more familiar with that process and, okay. and she caters to that more like that younger adult, you know, oh, so okay. like, I, like the hard part is like, I'm so senior focused that I just don't oh, know okay. that world as well. You know, like oh. I'm like my primary, like our primary focus is the senior care side of it. Right. So, right. which is a completely different way of billing. It's a, you know, it's a completely different even way that we run our activity programming. So right. um, I, I just don't want to lead you in the wrong direction, but I know that she could probably be a great, uh, you know, asset for you. Okay. Well, I appreciate that. No problem. And, and uh, let's see, you said it's a Felicia. And, and is that what you, when, you, when you registered, is that, is it under that name? It's under Felicia Culliver. Okay. It's L L I V E R. All right. I will see if I can get um if I can at least get you her contact information. I'll send you an email. So Okay. All and right. Have, Chris. What's that? You do have my information, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean if 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 you got a text or an email from me today, did you get one? Uh, I did. about the okay, yeah, perfect. I, then 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 yeah, we got all your information. So I'll we'll uh, we'll send you an email with uh, her contact information. Okay. Well thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, Thank you. No, no problem. I know I got a couple more here in the uh, the chat. Um, well, let's see here. Uh, ba, 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 ba. I'm just trying to go back to see where they all started. Suzette, you want to come back on on stage? Um, I have a question as well. I haven't 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Heck yeah. Um, right. I, I, so I'm from California, and I know you said that your uh, program is based more on seniors. But my mom and I are in the process of trying to open an adult day program, which it'll focus on, age, you know, uh, individuals 18 and older with a disability. And they'll just come, you know, to the program for like six hours. But anyway, um, our, we did the letter of intent to the regional center or to like a vendor, which was approved. So now we're starting our program design, which I'm doing myself. And it seems like it's going to be like take a while to do. But in the process, when should I start looking for a building? Because they did say like before I submit the program design, I have to have the building. And like you're saying, I, that'll be like just money coming out of my pocket, um, I guess for the starter cost. So should I wait more towards once I'm done with the program design before and then try to find the facility or what? Yeah, so I would say uh, number one, I would I would try to understand Okay, the target market that I'm in, what size location do I need? Do you know what size location you need? Um, no, I don't, but I was, we were just going to start off small. I think um, out here it said um, 14 clients per one bathroom. So I, would, I was just going to go something big enough to, you know, fit that. Gotcha. So would you, so, so I would try to clearly identify the number of people that you would like to um, target per day. So meaning okay. like if, like if, if, okay, on the low end, um, 20 people per day on the high end 30, you know, somewhere in there is our sweet spot at 25, we can make it work. Because what you got to okay. need, what, what, you, what you need to do before you do anything is just figure out with 25 people per day, and with my reimbursement rate that I'm going to get from the state, um, you know, what does that look like from a fi financial projection standpoint? Like, can I actually afford the space that we're looking to, to rent. Okay. Um, how, you know, how much staff am I going to need to you know, meet the needs of those 20 to 30 individuals? Uh, what is that going to cost me? Uh, have I included, you know, 20% on top of whatever I'm going to pay everyone for, you know, payroll taxes, workers comp, other insurances? Do I have an idea of what my insurance costs are? Um, do I, do I know, you know, my utilities, my, my cost, my, my rent, my you know, common area maintenance and the cost of all these things. So, so first things like before you do anything, before you even build the activity program, you want to make sure that like what you're trying to build is even viable. And, and, and there's a real business model there between 20 and 30 people per day. And then once okay. you can like at least prove that now, like, like I would start trying to figure out, okay, how much capital am I going to need to like carry this thing for a year? You know, so like if okay. I'm working on this thing for an entire year from like, okay, I got to, I've, 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 you know, I, I know what I need to do for the activity program. I know I got the space. I know I need to go through this application process and I start to identify like, what are all the things I'm going to need to do? Like to be able to like get to opening day. And then when I get to opening day, what am I going to have to do for the like six months after opening day to get to profitability? And then do okay. I have enough money to like make it to that point in time? And when you're creating the budget, you want to times it by two. And if you're really conservative and what you should really do is times it by three, especially if this is the first time you've ever done anything when it comes okay. to like starting your own business, you know? So, okay. so, so I would say like, like, you're like, Hey, we can do this for 50 grand. I would see like, how do I make sure we can do this for, or how do I make sure that I have 150,000 on hand? Because it's, it's just, it's, you're, you're going to, your mind is going to be blown at the amount of time it's going to take and, and, and the, like the cost you just don't realize. And all of a sudden they just, they just come at you and you're just like, I, I like now you're so deep into it. You, you're like, I can't go back. I got to keep going forward, but the hole keeps getting deeper, you know? Okay. And so I don't want to be discouraging because the fun part is the activity part. Like the fun part <laughs> is putting that plan in place. The, okay. you know, the, but, 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 but we want to make sure there's a viable business model first. So like, I would want to understand like, what is my reimbursement in, you know, from the state standpoint, is it, is it a hundred bucks a day? Is there a sliding scale where if they meet a certain medical need, like there might be like level one, two, three, or four, especially with younger adults, where like, depending on the medical needs assessment, there might be a higher or lower rate per day that you are able to charge. You know, so you want to kind of understand all those things first, put that into a financial projections, like what on the low end could I make? What on the high end could I make? 
So okay. in taking into consideration like the low end dollar amount, like what I could charge per day and the low end number of people that would come and then the high end. So you have an idea of like, okay, I can earn in this one location with 20 to 30 people somewhere between 500,000 and 1 million a year in revenue, you know? Okay. And at least you'll know like, okay, that's top line. And now I got to plug in all my expenses, you know? Okay. And then like, is there still something left at the end for you? Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. And then I think once you do that and you're like, all right, Chris, we did all that. I'm coming back. Here's you know what we think on the low okay. and the high end that we think we can net. Then let's talk about the other stuff. Okay. Like when we get a building or how much do we need, you know, cause there's just, you know, like, there's just some of those, like, I, I just, I've seen too many people get started and they just get halfway through it and they never, they didn't know how much it was going to cost them. And then they get stuck and they're on opening day and they have no money left. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. No problem. I got, I got time for one more question. Anyone want to have at it, just jump on there and introduce yourself, unmute yourself and, and love to answer, uh, I know you guys wrote some stuff in the chat. So if, if, if you guys are, if you guys wrote something in the chat and you'd like to ask it, this, this is your chance, this is your opportunity. I, I have a question. All right, all right. <laughs> Hi, Nicole, Chris. How are Hi. you? Hi, you can see me. I figured out how to I, I can it. see you. I can see you. Hey, uh, how's this, what's going on? I'm curious to hear from it, you. Everything's going good. I took your advice from the last time about marketing. So uh, based on that, in the month, I've already got an additional participant off of your advice about the marketing. All um, right. Let's go, girl. To... So we're up to four now. So yay. Woo, that's awesome. <laughs> Heck yeah. Hey, baby steps, you know? Yes. Rome absolutely. wasn't built in a day, you know? So I mean, hey, that's, you know, it's progress. I think, uh, you know, uh, you know, at the end of the day, like you just got to keep doing what you're doing and, and you know, and, and like, and then six months from now, you'll start to see real results, you know? So even, yes. even one is just enough to continue to give you hope, you know? That's right. That's right. So, um, I guess I watched your video on the, um, uh, Medicaid, uh, credentialing or like the steps to get, um, to be able to build Medicaid. And I didn't know whether that video was like older during like the pandemic. Cause you mentioned on there that it should take about a year for that process. So is that still accurate or do you know? I would, I would say it just like, like, so it could be six months to a year, you know? Um, okay. Like, so, cause, cause there's, there's three different stages. Okay. Mm -hmm. Up in the state of Florida. So stage one is get your NPI number, right? Mm -hmm. Their national provider identification number. It shouldn't take that long. That's mm -hmm. not that hard. Stage two. And I'm just, I'm going off of memory here. I think in that video, I was a little more detailed, but really the next stage is going to be, you know, applying for Medicaid through the state of Florida, right? Mm -hmm. And then once you get that and you've been accepted and now you're like, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're able to provide Medicaid services, step three is going to be getting contracted and credentialed with an MCO. Right. So it's, it's not that like a year, a year could be that like, that, that could be like a very conservative, like, like if worst case scenario. Did you, you know? say worst case scenario? Was Sorry, that? I was paying attention to one of the other people. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. Uh, well, she, she, maybe she knows. She might know. She might know this better. You know. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> I, I would just say, like, you know, like I don't know, um, you know, like somewhere between six and six months to a year is, I think, is a good, like, realistic target. You know. Okay. If, if everything goes good and everything goes well and everything goes smoothly and there's no hiccups, you know, maybe it's three to six months. Um, mm -hmm. If there's a little hiccup or a delay or, you know, there's a staffing shortage at the state level or you, you, you get your Medicaid license and now like, you know, um, you, you're having trouble like getting contracted with an MCO or whatever the case might be. Those are just those things that like. It, Alexa, you know, just, stop. <laughs> Sorry. Good old Alexa, always interrupting, you know. I know. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so I. So I, I, I don't want, if I, if I said a year in that video, I don't want that to be a discouragement to you. I just think just, you know, start, start the process and, um, and, and just continue beating the drum on the other side of things and just yes. know that like, Hey, this could take three months, six months, a year. It's in God's hands. I'm just, I'm just gonna, Absolutely. you know, I'm, I'm just gonna proceed, but over here, I'm still, you know, doing my marketing, you know, like, 
I know um, like this month, you know, it's nurses week. So we got a bunch of stuff going on. Like, I'm just giving you an idea of what we're doing. Like we made these little medication bottles and we put these like cute little quotes on them um, and put mm-hmm. candy in them. And we're dropping off the nurses and we're doing little, like, uh, you know, little breakfasts where we, you know, went to Sam's club. So we're setting up inside of like a, a, a skilled nursing rehab or like a, um, oh, you know, like, a, like, like an area where like social workers and case managers. And, you know, we got, you know, we got like, you know, breakfast and coffee and, you know, stuff to like fuel their day, you know, we got different yeah. places planned throughout the, the month, you know, and so just like doing something like that. And like, you know, we're building rapport, we're getting to know people, we're, you know, making these relationships, none of this stuff is going to pan out tomorrow. Like, like, we don't go in there with the anticipation or the expectation that like, in the next 30 days, it's going to produce a new lead. But we know if we do that every single like, you know, week, over the course of a year, like it's going to turn into relationships, friendships, good rapport and and all of that ultimately is going to lead to referrals right and I know that from being on the other side because I I've been a DON over assisted living so I yeah and and, and, and think about be. yeah and think about like the relationships you built and then you probably had your your, your little crew of people yeah. that like you referred hey this is my like five people these are my go-tos you know yeah and, and and it was the people that were the most consistent that just genuinely built the relationship with you right you know, like you didn't, you didn't ever, it got to a point where you probably didn't even think of them as like a referral source. You just, Hey, like that's, that's Mary, you know, I love Mary or that's, mm-hmm. you know, so-and-so like, and, and that's, and that's like what like now on the other end, that's what you're trying to do with them is just building that authentic relationship, you know, but like, especially at this stage too, where, you know, maybe, you know, finances are tight, you know, you know, showing pictures, building report, like maybe if you can't do the full setup, you know, you, you can just do some small token of appreciation. You get a dozen donuts. Right. If like, even if you can maybe just do that or get like, you know, make, maybe even make the coffee at home and bring it, you know, and get some sort of carrying case or, or one of those like giraffes, what do you call this thing? I don't know, but like something that the, you, you can make the coffee at your own house, you know, you can, you know, pick up a dozen donuts and like, you could do a cute little setup and, and, and you could do it, you know, you know, on a smaller budget, you know? Right, right. Awesome. But, um, Thank you so and, much. And, and, and I, I want to say you. one thing, if you didn't mind, sure. about the credentialing thing. Sure. <laughs> yeah, 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 go for it. I could tell you is like what he said, don't give up and make sure you keep calling them. Because yeah. like my okay. experience is exactly what he said. Like I, if I, like I have my license. By the time I was done with Medicaid and credentialing, it was almost time for me to renew again. <laughs> 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 I'm just yeah. being realistic with you. So yeah. I would say constantly on their back because most of the time, like it could be shorter if the rep is willing to help. Sometimes you'll get somebody who doesn't want to really work and then you won't hear from them for months. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, you know, or yeah, just not, busy. I don't want to say that they might be busy, you know? But, yeah, yeah. No, for, and, and, and one thing we do a lot, like one thing I've, I've taught like our own team a lot is. We're, we're very big on being extremely persistent, but with a ton of kindness. So like, yes. you know, like, like, so like, I mean, I'm like the I nicest guy that. and you, and you've heard it, you, you hear from me all the time, but I'm never like frustrated with you. I'm just like, I'm like, I call you so, thank like, you I'm so like, much for everything you do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know, it, it just, just kill them with kind of, I, I appreciate, you know, <laughs> thank you so much for my call. Like, like we're, we're going through our own like stuff with, uh, so, so the building we're building, you know, we have this, this, this uh, banking, uh, like third party person that has to approve all of the funds. Uh, like uh, when we submit a draw request and it's about a two or three week period. But I literally call that lady like two or three times a week. And I'm like, and like, so like, say like the guy came out and did the inspection to like get a visual on the place. I call her, I'm like, Hey Carter, how you doing? Hey, it's me again. You know, your friendly <laughs> pain in the butt, you know, just wanted to call him, but you know that Steve was there today to do the inspection. You know, so you should get, a, you should be getting a report here pretty soon. And like, that's me like trying to be proactive and say like, Hey, I'm on your radar. Right. You know, like, don't forget about me, <laughs> you know, cause I know if I do that, then I'm not going to get lost in the paperwork, you know? So, but, uh, but, well, but, but I'm always... anything that the process with the adult daycare process has taught me is to do that. Cause I just sat back at first and was waiting on Aka. Yeah. And then finally oh. I was like, no, yeah. Yeah, you, know, no. you gotta take you gotta, you gotta take control. Like literally, you gotta like babysit the entire thing uh, from start to finish. You know, so so same thing with like when you go to the MPI and the Medicaid and the case managers for the uh, for like you know um, like when you go into the credentialing for MCOs. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, then, and then the other thing too is while you're going through this process, you might as well throw the VA on top of it too. You know, and just 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 start the process on all those things. You know, but in the meantime, 
like you're like all right i'm gonna start these processes but i'm still gonna go out and do my marketing right. and build my relationships you know so okay. but uh hey guys i i i do gotta i do gotta run i know it's i know i, I went a little bit over tonight okay. i got my next uh meeting here coming up shortly but i want to thank all of you for joining me tonight thank you for all your wonderful questions uh you know we do this on the second uh wednesday of every month so we'll send out another link uh for next month in april or not april what am i talking about uh june so for june i'll let you guys know about that we'll send out an email about it but thank you all for all your support thank you for joining me on youtube thank you for joining me on this webinar tonight Thank you for caring about the world of adult day and trying to advance the world of adult day. And I appreciate all of you. Have a great day. Have a great night. Have a great week. We'll see you later. Bye -bye. Hey guys, thank you so much for joining me. If you'd like to learn how to open your own adult daycare center, go to adcpro.com. If you'd like the latest business tips, click here and make sure you subscribe to our channel. Click here. We'll see you guys next time.